shatter the fields of glory. The frontline PvP mode that divides a community. One side view it as the best map. Due to its simple layout and predictable objective spawns, it is far easier to set up large-scale fights. On the other side, there are those who do nothing but play objective, with even a few who get angry at those who dare play PvP in a PvP game mode. In this video, we shall go over the essentials new players need to know to not only understand Shatter, but to also have a great time playing it. In this series, I will be covering each of the frontline game modes, so be sure to check out my Ansel Hacker guide. And without further ado, let's begin. There are to date four frontline maps. The Seal Rock, in which players battle for control over Tomaliths. Shatter, the Fields of Glory, where players must balance control between combat and ice. Ansel Hacker, where teams fight for control of Ovus. And the Borderland Ruins, which is currently out of rotation for reworks. Each map has the same three key objectives, in which every player must come to understand. Team fights, battle highs, and map objective. The universal rule is that battle highs win games. Team fights and map objectives you balance together, which will be influenced by the team scoring. And the more battle highs your teams acquire, the easier it becomes to dominate the other two key objectives. The battle high system works the same across all frontline game modes. Each kill earns you 10 battle high points, and 2 for every assist. You obtain a new stage of battle high at every 20 score, granting 5 levels of battle high. Each level boosts healing and damage by 10%. 10% for the lowest rank, up to 50% for a battle high 5. I have said before that the battle high is the most important, and on Shatter, it plays a bigger role than just boosting damage for killing other players. What many overlook is that that same damage bonus affects how much damage you deal to the ice. Anyone regular to the Field of Glory will notice the insane amount of teams who do nothing but attack the objective, who are then confused when the other two teams, who have spent the entire match doing both combat and objectives, Run in with their battle highs, stomp the PvE players, and destroy ice within seconds, which makes Shatter the most important map in which you play to survive. The match is first to 1600, so you have plenty of time. First place can be 1400 to your set 500 score, and more times than I can count, these matches get flipped. The second and third place team start to gang up on first place, and the power of the battle high begins to shine. You are going to get idiot teams who do the typical second place fights third place. Unfortunately, all you can do is continue to make the play you believe is correct. The Fields of Glory is first to 1600. Each kill grants your team 8 points, and with every death you lose 8 points. So when your team engage in large scale fights, do not shy away. Even if you are not yet confident, the extra damage you could provide could be the deciding factor. It is not uncommon to drop whole alliances by 200 score from a well-timed and well-coordinated attack. The large ice grants you 200 score, and there must always be two active. Should one get destroyed, a new spawn will take its place. Large ice also have 3 million health points. Keep that in mind. Games have been lost when they are neck and neck, or due to one alliance having battle highs, enabling them to destroy their large ice much faster. And the huge point earner to watch out for are the small ice. Yes, they're only worth 50 points each. However, due to how many there are, you can spread out and even begin stealing them from other teams. The big difference is small ice only have 10% the HP of the large ice. 300,000 instead of 3 million is huge. So while the large is worth 200, within 30 seconds your team could amass 500 from small ice alone. With battle highs, no one can stop you either. Typically, 2-3 to three players is more than enough per small ice. The key is to head up to the cliffs and push the small ice that belong to the other teams. And you can pre-position for such plays. The first round of small ice spawns in at 12.30, and the second match at 4.30. It is rather uncommon to get that late into a match. 80% of matches only see one round of small ice, so make sure to grab as much as you can. It is a free catch mechanic you should not waste. Because of the predictable spawns, and even the map layout, Shatter is one of the most battle-intensive frontline maps. Dark Knights roam in every mode, but this map is a favor to many Dark Knight players. As such, you will see many Dragoons, Astros, Reapers, many of the best hard-hitting roles. Large-scale fights here can last a few minutes, or be over within seconds. It is very common to see many more Samurai players around to counter the meta. Monk players are also out in numbers to stunlock any Dark Knight. Black Mages I also see more of in Shatter, due to how easy it is to deal insane amounts of damage here. My point being that combat in Shatter, more often than not, is much faster than on Seal Rock and on Hack Air. You can of course play any role you wish, just be ready to make faster decisions. 
Even should you make the wrong play, you will get a better understanding of what you can and cannot get away with on Shatter. It is always better to die as a team fighting as a group than to divide with 80% off licking the ice, while only 20% of your team try to win. Here is the up-to-date chart of damage modifiers. Make sure to note when trying out a new role for the first time. The 50% damage reduction of tanks and melee, combined with battle highs and small choke points, have allowed the close-range roles to dominate this map far more than any range role. Remember, at the end of the day, Frontline is a casual game mode, which can be extremely funny with the right group of friends. If you are looking to pad some stats with high kill games and get some wonderful clips, Shatter is the place to be. Hey, buddy, get off your fucking mouth, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> you, you bitch! You fucking bitch! And no. that's the YouTube show. No, no, you bitch! <laughs> ah! Red's turn. Yeah. Okay. Huge damage. Four knockouts. Five knockouts. That was a delay. The man. Limit break all. Look at the hell fucking evaporate. I'm gonna be careful. They've got monks as well. I don't want for it. Limit break all. Very nice, very nice. Almost there. Slip pop. You did. Hello, Bard. Welcome to hell. Slip up. You did. Hello, Samurai. Yeet. <laughs> did we both just snipe him? It's all cheese tonight. We're doing some kills. Must kill, must click ice, very on the ice. Swish! Mm -hmm. And um, there no, goes my entire party. <laughs> Going up. Shoink! I love seeing how cool it's my fire fire is, but yeah, I'm gonna push it. For you visual learners, I have prepared some map animations, going over a few key and common scenarios to help you better understand the kind of plays you will encounter. The shutter map is devised of two triangles, the first of which being spawn to spawn, and the second of which lines up the big ice objectives around the edge with one more dead center. This shape design puts all three teams at an equal distance to each large ice. During the Fields of Glory, at any given time there will be two large ice up. As soon as one breaks, another takes its place. Let's go over the first scenario right off spawn. The first large ice spawns right of your spawn, with the second spawning across the map. Many make the mistake of dropping from the cliff. This can work with a truly aggressive team, but 99% of the time this is the incorrect play. What happens often? is the team to the left of the ice have the main advantage. Taking their ramp, they often push the cliff jumpers into a corner. This makes battle control far easier. Now the third team will have control of an ice all to themselves, and the smart groups leave a few behind to deal with the objective. Then as a group they cut through mid, either rushing in to join the battle, trapping the cliff jumpers from all sides, or they hold the choke point, picking off any who attempt to flee. The correct route off spawn is to go down your center ramp, wait at the choke for a moment, and take the time to see if the third team are moving in. If they are, give up and be ready to take the team fight. If not, you can then freely move in to strike fast as one group. This is important to note. These choke points to the large ice are death traps. Good players, especially Dark Knights, set up ambushes. Tucking into walls, they are able to hide from sight, and at the same time use the third-person perspective to time their attacks. So do not blindly rush in and out. Angle your cameras when you can to check those corners. Here is Ava using one such spot. She tucks into the wall while I place myself out in the open. As the fine piece of bait that I am, the Annas cannot resist running into this choke point. And even though we had far less numbers, the confusion and some well-used abilities was more than enough to force them back. 
The best way to defend is to take the fight to them. Use the choke and prevent them from ever establishing a good foothold. You no doubt see it often. When an enemy team rushes in, your alliance just falls apart, losing both the battle and the objective. So if you see a few willing to fight in the choke, do not be afraid to help. Here's another scenario. The large ice left of your spawn is up, and one has spawned in mid. This presents a great opportunity. As the team moves down your ramp towards your ice as a group, you then hold, waiting to see if there are any cliff jumpers. If not, you can then expect both enemy teams to be fighting over mid. A few should stick behind for the objective, and the mass of your alliance should move towards mid. The common play is to then wait for the enemy teams to engage one another. You then rush in, strike fast to claim as many kills as possible. Sometimes working so well, your team also get to claim that very same ice. Under the same scenario, only this time you are one of the two teams in mid. The mistake many players make is rushing for the objective. At all times, you need to be ready for a 2v1 alliance fight. If your Dark Knight rushes in, by all means join them. If you can burn one team down before the ice spawns, you can oftentimes claim it for yourself. Unless the third team comes to join, at which point you place yourself in a 1v1 team fight. The large ice spawns are also predictable. There must always be two active, so when one is destroyed, you can 50-50 guess the next one. This helps if your alliance is struggling to make any plays with the current ones active, meaning you and your alliance can be first to the next ones for map control. This third scenario, while it sounds good for your team, actually causes you issues later in the match, as battle highs play an even bigger role on this map compared to Seal Rock and Ansel Hacker. Let's say the North Ice has spawned in. Both the Maelstrom and the Immortal Flames are fighting over it. The Southeast is yours without contest and your team have no interest in third-partying up north. You break your objective first and happily move west to the next one for free. This scenario happens often. You get the free lead, and the longer this goes on, the more unwilling your team is to fight. The reason this becomes the issue is while yes, you will have the lead, sometimes by a thousand score, the other teams not only build score, but they also have battle highs. Sometimes it's just one team, but often it is both, which means later on your team gets 2 v one with so many battle highs around, it could even feel like a 3v1. Your alliance cannot fight back, as you have all simply bounced from crystal to crystal, and some team members will double down on this, telling everyone to ignore the fight and just focus objectives. They also forget these battle highs, affect the damage they do to the ice. Suddenly, you're against one to two alliances farming objectives faster than your team and running down your alliance. Your team is losing 8 points per death. Every kill they claim is another 8 on their score. They can now destroy the small ice within seconds. I have even seen large ice drop within 10 seconds, 50 points per small and 200 for every large, results in rounds where objective-only groups lose 99% of the time, as Shatter is plagued with one key issue, 100% objective uptime, meaning this map gets flooded with PvE and XP farmers, more often than the other modes. You will see much more crying in chat from those who simply do not understand. You can explain it, but their tiny minds crumple more. You need to balance both objective and PvP together. Too much objective time and you get run down. Too much PvPing and you may not be able to catch up. But to put it simply, if you see those telling you to do nothing but attack the ice, you can disregard their every word. It is normally a ploy to try finish the match sooner so they can be done with their roulette and claim their XP. A few last tips that have great results is firstly, as a team, sometimes you use these land bridges to flank, allowing you to come up behind the team who has the advantage on the large ice. If the third team moves in, they become completely trapped, claim some kills and then loop back out before they respawn. Equally, when the small ice spawns in, you want to again use these same land bridges to steal small ice from the opposing team's side, as you can get 50 points per small ice. This simple strat can very quickly add up. And there we have it. Many of the key components New players need to understand when joining the Fields of Glory. If you feel I have missed anything out, or wish to share your knowledge as well, be sure to drop your comments down below. And if you wish to support my channel further, I have recently created a Patreon. A big thank you to my new members over there, and thank you everyone for your continued support. Enjoy your day, and I will see you all in the next one.